Welcome ladies and gents, Chris Andre here. You can find me at BetBoxing on Twitter. Of course, you can subscribe to the channel. We're very tired, Chris Andre here. It's 5.21 a.m. here on Monday morning. I should be collapsing in bed, but a lot of you guys have been messaging me. Chris, man, come on, where's the review? You haven't put it up yet for Buatsi and Richards. And I, you know, I listen, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I've got to make the effort to put it out there before I go to bed. But I'll be honest with you, man, I feel like collapsing. I've been out on the Saturday. I've been out on the Sunday. I had a birthday on the Sunday. On the Saturday, I was out. Um, and yeah, man, I'm getting old. So I had to watch this fight. I've seen this fight twice, but I've seen it on repeat. I had to avoid the, I had to avoid the, uh, the result. I had birthday parties to go to. I'm feeling it, man. Chris Andre needs the elixir of youth or something. But let's talk boxing. Before we do get into the technical elements and the breakdowns of what we saw, what we expected to see, what we actually saw, the strengths and weaknesses of both guys moving forwards, what they need to work on, what it could mean against potential opponents. Before we do that, let's talk about the scorecards. I know a lot of people are very, very unhappy with Tony Bellew, uh, people that I respect. Hatman felt his card was ridiculous, uh, that, you know, having Buatsi win wide was terrible. Um, G-Man has uh, retweeted someone who says that Bellew, I believe, was a company man and it was a disgrace, his card and stuff like that. I have to be honest with you, I sort of disagree with these guys. I'm sorry, I do. For me, it was an 8-4 type of fight to Joshua Buatsi. Um, having said that, I can understand where the discrepancy la uh, lies because I felt there were three very clear rounds to Buatsi, 2, 3, and 10, and there were three very clear rounds to Richards, 7, 8, and 9. From those six close rounds, though, I don't think they were all swing rounds. They were close rounds. Number six was a swing, which I gave to Richards. But that aside, I actually felt that Buatsi won the other rounds. He won close rounds, competitive hard rounds, but he won them. In round one, for instance, he came out very aggressively and he started quickly. He then slows down a little bit in the middle part of the round and it's in the air, right? Either guy can win it. Maybe Buatsi had even outlanded even prior to the finish but he finishes with a really good flurry of shots. And that nicks it for him. It puts it in his court. He's the one that's done more over the course of the round. And the same sort of thing happened in round four. So for me, these sorts of close rounds, five of the six went to Buatsi. And that's why to me, I see it as an 8-4 sort of round, uh, an 8-4 sort of fight. I don't have a problem even if that six went to Buatsi and you had it 9-3 to Buatsi. But I also don't have a problem if you had it 7-5 to him. I don't think Richards got a draw, and I don't think Richards won the fight. I can't see that because although these rounds were close, they weren't all swing. They were competitive. They weren't clear rounds to Buatsi, but he was doing enough. So for me, it was an 8-4 type of fight, and it was a fight of two halves. So I do understand where Bellew was getting, what, what he was getting at there. I don't see an issue with it. But let's talk about some of the technical elements and why I believe what I believe happened and, and why, where the fight was won and lost and stuff like that first of all in the preview of the fight uh we did say that essentially i expected it to be very competitive at range and it was competitive at range they both were jabbing really well buatsi's jab was fantastic at points particularly in the first half of the fight he was doubling up with it tripling up with it finding a home snapping jab craig richards too was finding a home for that jab but buatsi was really landing it solidly and more consistently um and we also spoke about Perhaps Buatsi would be able to, while it would be competitive at range on the inside and inner mid range, that's where Buatsi would start to pull away. That's where he would start to shine. And indeed, up close, he was the guy that was landing a better quality work, whether it was hooks to the head or whether it was uh, little uppercuts on the inside, body work, whether he was tying up one arm. He did this really brilliant thing, which is a typical Virgil Hunter type of move or Andre Ward type of move. He'll tie up one arm. In this case, it was usually the left arm of, of Craig Richards. And he's digging with his free arm, uppercuts to the body and shovel hooks to the body while he's also turning him. And what that does is it prevents the opponent from finding... Uh, balance to be able to tie up back or get the leverage to push you back or throw his own punch back with his own free arm he's not able to do it you're breaking his construct something that i speak about a lot on this channel somebody recently uh called me chris construct andre because it's something i refer to all the time but it's so important to have your balance beneath you he was taking that away from him when he was doing that and that's where he really started to come to the fore for me when he was on the inside particularly early in the fight later on in the fight you saw richard's also willing to land some shots to the body and he was doing very well with them uh more often than not, he was getting outworked on the inside, but he too was affecting Buatsi. You could see a couple of those body shots, again, something we referred to in the preview, were affecting Buatsi. He does seem to be affected to the body on occasion. Um, we also spoke about 
the brilliant trigger counters of Joshua Buetsi. And you saw examples of that again, particularly in the first half of the fight. You know, in round three, a round that I gave to Buetsi, the commentary team gave a lot of credit to Richards, but they were sort of overlooking some of the things that Buetsi was doing in return. So for instance, if you go back and watch the fight again, on two minutes and 45 seconds at a round remaining, you will see that Richards lands a right hand. And you'll see that the, the you know, the, the commentator mentions it, it gets a bit excited with the crowd roar. Buetsi instantly lands a left hand of his own as Richards is pulling out. That's that trigger counter we were talking about, whereby if you are going to land on, on Buetsi, he will punish you with something in return, unless you're getting off the line, getting low, blocking, doing something to prevent that happening. That fire's coming back at you. He wasn't able to prevent that with Richards. Uh, later on in that same round, with 10 seconds of the round remaining, you see that Richards lands a right hand down the pipe, and Andy Lee and the crowd get excited. It doesn't affect Buatsi, but it's a solid shot. But as he lands that shot, Buatsi lands what can be described as a straight left shot, like a power jab, and it catches him right on the sort of line of the jaw. And you can see that it kind of affects um, Spider Richards. He, he sort of like takes a couple of steps back. It affects him. It hurts him. He did not win that exchange. Now, that's not the, these are not the only reasons I gave the round to Buatsi, by the way. Buatsi, I felt, outworked him. But in the big moments of Richards, he was also punished. And you could argue that he actually was the one that was affected, whereas Buatsi wasn't. He was the one that got hurt. Buatsi didn't. Right, so those trigger accountants were on point, and it wasn't just then. In round five, two, two minutes and forty seconds of the round remaining, you'll see a right hand from Richards, and a trigger left hook comes back from Buatsi. He hurts Richards with it, and then that leads to a flurry of shots in the fifth round. So you could see that that trigger counter was also finding a home, as was that jab, that pummeling jab that was, we were talking about, where he's very focused on honing on the target and punching through the jab as you make punching through the target as you make the move he was having a lot of success with that was Buatsi early in the fight but one of the things we also spoke about in the preview is that he has a tendency to gas after he tries to put his foot on the gas and we saw this against Bolotniks in round six when he hurt Bolotniks and he tried to take him out of there and his feet were a little bit too far out you know Bolotniks wasn't ready to go yet you know he was he was undercooked and he was trying to serve that turkey on the table for Christmas dinner. He's going to give everyone food poison. He's going to end up hurting himself. And he nearly did end up hurting himself because he gassed. And up until round nine, from round six to nine, he after that flurry in the sixth, his tempo fell drastically. Well, you saw similar sort of things happening here. Uh, in round two, he flew a, threw a flurry, which ended with one minute and 21 seconds of the round remaining. From that moment on, he looked gassed and did not throw a punch again until 57 seconds at a round remaining, and that was a single jab. So he's practically out of bounds now for 25 to 30 seconds, not doing anything after he's thrown his flurry. The same thing happens in round five. He throws a flurry with, with one minute and 29 seconds at a round remaining and doesn't throw a jab, a, a punch again until a jab with one minute and six seconds of the round remaining. And the commentator picked up on this now. And he even mentions that Buetsi is having to refuel. Virgil Hunter actually warned him at the end of round six, uh, you stop working after your combinations and you're letting him get back into it. Use your jab after you finish. So what Virgil wants is for him to land those combinations, those big flurries of shots, and then when you want to slow the tempo, jab your way out. Be competitive with it. The problem is he seems so gassed that he doesn't even want to come up with the jab. He seems like he really needs to catch his breath. And you saw the same thing happen in the round, in, in the 10th round. He throws a flurry to... Um, after he lost his gum shield. So he lost his gum shield in the 10th. And again, competitive round. He was winning the round though, quite clearly. Loses his gum shield and then starts to throw this big... Oh, actually, no, sorry. I say quite clearly winning the round. At that point, it was competitive. I had him edging it. But then he loses his own gum shield and starts to go off on this flurry. And he lands big shots. He lands big shots on Richards. And after he gets his gum shield back in and stuff, his tempo drops again. Now, when his tempo is dropping, you can hear Richard's corner calling for him to make him work. He's gassed. He's gassed. Richard's is outworking him in those moments, but he's not doing enough to overthrow all the good work that had come before from Buetsi. So it's not that Richards wasn't competitive. He just didn't work enough, in my humble opinion, to turn it in his favor. But that issue of gassing after flurries was clearly there for Joshua Buetsi. And the problem is not the gassing. There are fighters that fight in spurts. You get this with some fighters, right? It's just Canelo Alvarez used to be very much like that. Now he's more methodical and consistent by throwing individual power shots. But he, you know, you do get guys that, that like to fight in bursts. Andre Berto was a little bit like that. The thing is, though, the problem with Buatsi is that when he fights in bursts, 
he needs to find a way to then make it so that when you are not punching, nothing is happening. You either have to go for a walk, become like Bernard Hopkins. He was brilliant at conserving energy by going for a walk, turning away at the shoulder, offering you just his back and his shoulder as he's walking around quickly and he's catching his breath. And as you start to chase after him, he put on a masterclass against Babu Shumanov doing this. As Shumanov would try to come after him, occasionally he would just literally turn and throw a right hand down the pipe, punish him for it, and then start walking the other way, right? So he's basically maintaining range and making you chase him. But while he's doing that and not offering you much of a target, he's trying to catch, capture his breath. The other thing that, again, Hopkins used to do was to tie you up. And you can see that he's developed this inside game brilliantly. So if after your flurries, you're gassed, tie up. Because when you're tying up and you're wrestling, it is tiring too. But that's about muscles. That's a muscular uh, um, method of affecting your fitness. It's not a lung issue. He seems to get out of breath. So once you've landed your flurries, it's okay to tie up and wrestle him and get your air back beneath you, right? That's the issue that there is there. You've got to find a way not to be engaging um, with the opponent because what happens is he, he doesn't throw a punch, he covers up, but he's staying in range. He's just on the edge of range. And the other guy's able to pop him and he's eating shots. You don't want to be there as a target. This is a vital thing that he's going to have to work on because I'll tell you something, if you're fighting in bursts and you are not in a position whereby you're taking away the other opponent's opportunity to then hurt you in between your your bursts and you're up against a guy like Baturbiev, he's going to break you down, man. He's going to bust you up. What are you going to do? You're going to do really good work against Baturbiev and then decide for 25 seconds you're not going to throw a punch, but also you're going to stay in range. Craig Rich is a very good boxer, but he ain't Baturbiev, bro. He's going to bust you up. Same with Bivol. Bivol is not as destructive as Baturbiev, but we've spoken in that Canelo Alvarez preview how he's able to be in and out of range um, and he'll make you reach in, fall in, and then he starts to go to work with flurries. Again, if you're going to be the sort of person who's going to throw a big flurry of shots and not get him out of there or not seriously hurt him and then decide that, okay, now I'm going to lower my tempo and you're staying in the pocket, Bivol's going to let his hands go. Anthony Yard. Anthony Yard, I, I believe that uh, Biv, that um, that Buatzi would probably outbox him for the majority of it. I think he's the better boxer than Yard. But you think you're going to sit there for 25 seconds and not throw back against Anthony Yard, a guy who's a monster puncher like that, who has his own, that sort of athleticism? What's he going to do? Imagine he's landing in those 25 seconds, he lands six, seven shots on you. You're in serious trouble, man. That's Anthony Yard. He can bang. So this is the problem that uh, he's got Buatzi. He's going to have to work on how to take away the opponent's ability to punch him when he's not able to punch back because he's gassed, because he clearly has natural stamina issues. The other thing is maybe that he is throwing these flurries when, like I said, the opponent is undercooked. Again, this is something Hatman touched upon in his live, uh, because I did message into Hatman to explain during this live that I think he's actually got natural stamina issues. And so he has to be technical, because Hatman would like to see him be less technical and more aggressive. But I don't think he can be a full-out hunter like that, because he does seem to gas. He throws these flurries and then he needs you know, seconds to reset, 30 seconds, 20 seconds to reset. So for those 20 seconds, for me, he's got to be able to take away the, op the opposition's opportunity to be able to land in return. That's how I see it. That's where he needs to improve for me. Craig Richards, listen, he did really, really well. Um, I had no doubt he would be competitive. I was really impressed with the fact that he was able to tighten up and straighten up his shots to take away the inside arc for Buatsi. When he was on the inside in the latter half of the fight, he too was landing some really good shots on the inside. What I would have liked to have seen him do in terms of you know what could have been different is that when Buatsi was gassing, he had to let go of his hands in a more uh, frenetic manner. He had to go through the gears more and really put it on Buatsi. I don't think he necessarily did that on numerous occasions where Buatsi had gassed off the flurries. That's how I see the fight. I'd love to see Richards fight somebody like Lyndon Arthur. Or perhaps even another big time fight. Oh, listen, Callum Johnson's been out for a long time. That could be a brilliant fight to be able to catapult yourself back into it if you're able to beat him. How about Vlasov, Maxim Vlasov? That'd be a really good fight between two really good boxers. He's not going to get somebody who's on the verge of a world title right now. Anthony Yard's not going to fight him, for instance. He's also not going to get a title shot. But there's no doubt about it that I'd love to see him in the ring again. This was a fantastic advert for British boxing. Although I had it 8-4 to Buatzi, it was a terrific fight. A brilliant advert for the sport. Uh, let me know what you think, ladies and gents, for everything we've spoken about. Give me your opinions. Chat to you soon. Please hit that like button, subscribe button, notifications button. Take care. God bless.